Welcome. I am Nigis Tiburu, Regional Technical Manager for the FAMIN Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. Thank you for watching. If at any time you wish to skip ahead, click below the slides to advance. To access closed captioning, click on the YouTube icon. This presentation summarizes the food security outlook through December for the 10 countries that FUSENET monitors in East Africa, along with Yemen. Before we start, a bit of background on our analysis. FUSENET forecasts food security outcomes using a methodology called scenario development. Every three months, our specialists conduct a nine-step process to analyze a range of information and data and develop scenarios that look three to six months into the future. In Yemen, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, and Uganda, this analysis is the basis of food security outlook reports and monthly updates. Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, and Djibouti are covered remotely by an analyst in our regional office. The monthly remote monitoring report focuses on anomalies. On the maps, a colored outline of the country indicates the highest level of food insecurity anticipated in areas of concern. FUSENET describes acute food insecurity using Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC 2.0. This five-level scale is used by analysts and humanitarian assistance agencies around the world. As we look at classifications, please note that when an area reaches phase 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. FUSENET uses an exclamation point on its maps to highlight areas where humanitarian assistance is helping to lower the phase classification. Here's a summary of the outlook. The highest areas of concern are Yemen and South Sudan. Both countries currently have significant populations facing IPC Phase 4 emergency. Sudan, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Somalia, Kenya, and Tanzania are all likely to have populations in Phase 3 crisis during this outlook period. Conflict is one of the main drivers of food insecurity in the region. In Yemen, fighting continues to drive widespread food insecurity, leaving at least 6 million people in need of emergency food assistance. Diesel and wheat flour, the main staple food, are sporadically available and only at extremely high prices. OCHA estimates that some 1.3 million people are displaced. IPC Phase 4 emergency is likely to continue through at least December. In South Sudan, IPC Phase 4 emergency is widespread in Greater Upper Nile region. Continuing conflict prevented many people from planting and blocked deliveries of humanitarian assistance. In addition, rainfall was below average in the region, unlike other parts of the country which saw average rainfall. Green harvests will be limited and food security will remain severe through at least December. Across all of South Sudan, staple food prices have reached record highs. Depreciation of the South Sudanese pound, increased trader costs, and low import levels are the main causes. In June, sorghum prices in Juba were 66% higher than last year, and 82% higher in Torit. Poor households in Lex, Northern Bahr el Ghazal, and Warab states are facing phase 3 crisis. With coming harvests, the number of people requiring urgent food assistance will decline to 2 million by late December, but begin rising again in early 2016. In other parts of East Africa, the ongoing El Niño weather pattern is having a major impact on food security. In northern areas of the region, El Niño typically decreases rainfall from June to September, the main rainy season. In southern areas, El Niño increases rainfall from October to December. Consistent with the drying effects in northern areas, parts of Ethiopia and eastern Sudan have had an extremely poor start to the season. This dryness is expected to continue. In southern areas, above average rainfall from October to December will help improve grazing in pastoral areas and agricultural lowlands, but it will also increase the chance of flooding. Here's more detail on specific countries. Ethiopia. Below average rainfall delayed planting and extended the lean season in parts of Tigray, Amara, Oromia, and SNNP regions. In southern Afar and city zone in Somali region, extreme dryness is causing an unusually high number of livestock days and decimating normal food and income sources. In many areas, high cereal prices, low livestock prices, and limited income are making it difficult for poor households to purchase enough food. Acute malnutrition is rising. 
Government and international humanitarian assistance is helping in reducing acute food insecurity in these areas. For example, parts of northern Somali region would be classified higher than the current phase 3 crisis without assistance. Similarly, parts of SNNPR, Amara, Tigray and Oromia will remain in phase 2 stressed through December because of assistance. Sudan Food security improved this year compared to last year due to the availability of the 2014-2015 surplus production and below average staple food prices. The situation is expected to deteriorate in September as the lean season peaks. It will improve from October to December when the new harvests arrive. Early season rainfall was 25-50% to 50 below average in main production areas. Field reports indicate that water levels in the Nile are low. This graph from Kasala State shows how rainfall so far this year is below the mean and also tracking close to 2013, a below average production year. As a result, the area planted remain lower than normal, especially for sesame and sorghum. Vegetation conditions are poor. Forecasts call for below average rainfall in the main production areas for the rest of the season. Harvests are likely to be below average, but carryover stocks from last year's exceptionally good season may help fill shortfalls. Somalia Across the country, the majority of poor households will experience phase 2 stressed through December. However, the situation will deteriorate as a result of flooding in riverine areas and poor harvests in agropastoral areas. The most food insecure people will be in Middle Shabale, Audal, Hiran, and middle Juba. They are expected to fall into phase 3 crisis during the extended July to November lean season. Kenya. Food security remains stable, though significant areas of the country will experience phase 2 stressed through December. Due to below average production in the last two seasons, poor households are relying entirely on markets for food. Consequently, demand is abnormally high. Localized areas of Isiolo North and Wajir West sub-counties will remain in phase 3 crisis through at least September. This is due to poor conditions for livestock and low water and milk availability. As livestock productivity recovers during the October to December short rains, these areas are expected to improve to phase 2 stressed. However, with increased rainfall likely as a result of El Nino, the risk of flooding will also rise. Due to erratic and poorly distributed long grains from March to May, crop production may be below average for a third consecutive season. Staple food prices are expected to rise through September, but then decrease after a new harvest in October. A few brief comments on other countries. Djibouti Following two successive poor seasons, IPC Phase 3 crisis is anticipated through December among poor households in southeastern and Obok pastoral areas. Additional monitoring of Djibouti City is also needed following reports of increases in the number of children admitted to nutrition treatment centers. Uganda Main season harvests in Karamoja are expected in September, three months later than normal. Preliminary estimates suggest production is likely to be 70 to 80 percent below average. Most poor households will be in phase 2 stressed in the coming months. However, in areas where production was extremely low, phase 3 crisis outcomes will prevail through December. Before closing, a reminder to check the reports on our website for more details. You may also subscribe to alerts on specific countries or regions. Once you sign up, we will send an email whenever a new report is posted. And of course, you can learn about new reports by following us on social media. Thank you for listening. Our next video briefing is scheduled for November.